From initial conditions to general solution, solving a time-dependent perturbation theory equations. In this problem, 11.6, we're tasked with solving the equation 11.17 to the second order in perturbation theory for the general case of CA at time equals 0 equals A and CB at time equals 0 equals B. Okay, and this is going to be a very long, tedious uh, algebraic clinic, so to speak, because typically we saw that one of these was zero, but now that we're in some combination of two states for a two-level system, solving this in a general case will be a lot of bookkeeping, so get a lot of paper ready. Why do we care? Well, generally, we're in some combination of mixed states, so having general states or some A, some B, in both of the two level systems is very important to us. That being said, the challenge for you is where do we see this? Okay, there's plenty of examples out there, but does one come to mind for you? That being said, with all of the writing and algebra that's gonna happen, don't forget the PDF will be posted on Patreon, and if you want it, I can shoot you the link real quick. No, no big deal, but it might help you in keeping everything organized. And if you're curious about the world of science, be sure to subscribe. I post educational content every week to quench your thirst for curiosity. So with that, let's jump right in. All right. So, in stop number one and two, uh, what we're generally going to do is follow the same script that the book gave. And for the general case, we need to take this level, uh, we need to take this level by level all the way up to the second order, which is what's been asked of us. Okay, so here what we have to do is, well, the zeroth order is the easiest one, of course, because that's just listing zero up top to indicate the order and what state we're in. And in that case, we're in state A for CA and CB, we're in B, no big deal. Again, second order or zero order, so we put a zero up top. And, you know, with something like this, with the perturbations, we can substitute the zero order value into the perturbation equations in this case, uh, well, we finished zeroth order pretty quickly, but in this case, we have to substitute the zeroth order back into equation 11.17. So given that the equation is C dot for A equals negative I H bar, the matrix element AB, of course, the perturbation, E to the minus I omega naught T, and then we plug in the zeroth order uh, part here, and that's just B, okay? Again, these equations are coupled because for CA, I need my state B, and for CB, I need my state A, as we see down here, okay? And so, by doing this for a two-level system, we can solve this for a function of time by just simply integrating, okay? So, since C dot is CA over DT, we can just integrate with respect to time. And in this case, we're going to, uh, since we want a function of T alone, we integrate over t prime just to integrate out all that up to t where we can have a function of t. So no big deal there, okay? And so doing this, we can obtain the first order and then we can repeat this as outlined in equation 11.21 and get the second order after that. Okay, so plug it in, no big deal. We see that integration over all of this, not that bad. Similarly for CB, we just plug in a CA term, which is just A as you see the color code, and you see that if I'm blue, I need some kind of B in there. That's because CA requires CB. If I'm green and CB, I need to put A in there, so I'm good to go. Note that in both of these, we have some coefficients, negative I, H bar, and B, and then negative I, H bar, and A, that we can take outside. But note that AB here, BA here, a negative omega naught and a positive omega naught, That'll come back later, and it'll save us a lot of time if we use a bookkeeping trick. So, once again, this is also part of equation 11.17 because they're coupled. So let's go ahead and clean this up and get the first order knocked out. Alright, so then if we want the first order correction, that's just the zeroth order plus the CA that we just found. And so taking all those constants outside, we get a really good summary of the first order. Again, indicate it with the uh, superscript, parentheses one, not too bad. Okay. So following the same iterative process, we substitute the first order corrections into the perturbation equations, solve, and then combine the results in the first order to obtain the second order correction. Again, this is just mimicking the outline that uh, Griffiths and Schroeder had for 11.22. 
And so right now we'll just focus on the CA term because it does get clunky. So let's go ahead and do that. And that's where we go for stop number three. For CA in the second order, we have to find it regarding the first order correction. So we just rinse and repeat. But now instead of just B, we have B minus this integral term. And this is going to get clunky real fast, as you could imagine. So we're going to have to distribute all of this and do that term and that term. So let's see how we do that and clean it up very quickly or as quickly as possible because it does get gross. But before we do that, if you're finding this helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. It helps more curious minds like you discover this content. All right, so running the same game and integrating with respect to uh, T prime or T double prime. We see that the integral from 0 to t, this is our term, that we have to distribute into our c1 term. But note again that we have to be careful with the indices here, or not really indices, but the, uh, the variables. If we want a function of t, then we have to integrate up to t. So the second order correction that we're going to try to find from the perturbation equations is negative ih bar, you know, the matrix element with t prime. That goes on the outside. But the integral on the inside, we have to integrate from 0 to t prime, and that forces us to re, uh, relabel the t inside our first order to t double prime. So we integrate out all t double prime here to get t prime. Then we have this integrand is one giant t prime. Okay. Once we integrate out t prime, then we get only a function of t, and we're good to go. So from there, we have to distribute this thing into that term this thing into this other integral term and we see here it's not a easy thing to keep track of so negative i h bar and b we can bring those outside at some point negative i h bar and then this negative here they cancel easy enough we can bring this constant outside that's all of that and then we see the i squared goes to negative one which is what we see there but also note that in the cleanup duty here since we can split integrals since they're linear this integral to this thing goes right here. This integral with this thing goes right here. And now we can bring all the constants outside and focus on just what is inside with the matrix elements and the exponentials. So negative i h bar, negative i b over h bar comes here. Negative a over h bar squared. Note here that we lose track of the imaginary, which is fine because we had two of them. But that turns that to a minus sign. And just keep track of the matrix elements. We have A, B, negative omega uh, naught. And then we have A, B, negative omega naught, B, A, I, omega naught. So that's positive there. And then we'll see what happens when we clean it up and compare it to the C, B equation. So at this point, we're done up to second order with all this equation here that we need for C, A. So now we can do the same thing, but focus on the C, B term. So the equation from 11.17, CB dot gives us negative I over H bar, matrix element, E to the positive I omega T, and then the first order correction for CA. So rinse through that process again. We see we plug in the matrix expression, or not matrix, but integral expression for CA1, first order. Go ahead, solve with the integral, and then distribute this term and all of those. Again, re, uh, re evaluating the or relabeling the time element here. So we're good to go. Just distribute, cancel, get rid of the negatives as you see fit. Get all the constants out front where they can be. Go ahead, split up the integrals, get the constants out front. Again, rinse, repeat, a whole lot of the same stuff. So now that we have our um, constants out front with the integrals, let's go ahead and uh, get a summary statement here. But let's note here that we have matrix element BA with a positive I omega. BA, positive I omega. AB, negative I omega. Okay. So when we solve this down and summarize it, let's go ahead and do that and then give a quick talking point on how to keep this uh, in line for the bookkeeping because it is quite nasty. All right. So then our second order, which is what we wanted, was CA2. Uh, that should be a 2 up there as well. Excuse me. Um, that's the CA2, 0 plus the CA term that we had previously just found. And then CB2. Let's just be a 2. I would correct that. That's a 2 up there. Darn copy-paste. Um, and then we see that, again, 
keep the zeroth order plus the first correction order that we found baked into the equation. Summarizing that as we see here, pretty uh, pretty gross actually. <laughs> so, but just to keep in mind that A B B A, that's a negative, that's a positive. A B B A negative positive, B A A B positive negative. So, you know, this is actually pretty easy to solve if we use a quick trick. But nonetheless, we solve for the second order like we were tasked with. But as you see, there's a lot of bookkeeping in this theory as we saw briefly in chapter 7. As such, it is often easier to solve for one of these, say, CA equation, and get CB by switching the letters A and B and changing the sign on every omega, which is why I pointed them out early. But if we want a reason why, this is because omega naught was defined as EB minus EA over H bar. So if we switch the signs, then we get omega naught prime, then we have EA minus EB. But note that if we put EB first, we take its negative sign width, and then note that the EA term is positive, but we can write a positive as two negative signs. When we write them as two negatives, that allows us to factor one of them out, and then we have EB minus EA. Again, all over H bar, so this minus sign can come out front, and then we get EB minus EA over H bar, which is just negative omega naught. So switching the signs on this and switching the letters, very useful trick, and it saves you a lot of time if you want to kind of fast forward this process and not have to deal with solving it twice. To me, that's worth investing and in keeping that trick in mind. All right, so thank you for watching. It was a pretty quick video, but the, the setup and the, the algebra simplification, all that is just kind of gross. So. Definitely pay very close attention to your indices, your time variables with integration, see what you want, see how to manipulate it. Um, like I said, they do a pretty good job in the book of walking through it, but they, of course they're not going to put every algebraic step in there. That would take up too many pages, as you can see clearly. So definitely um, go ahead, take the time you need to go ahead and sh uh, shuffle through it all, but not that, bad of a, not that bad of an exercise, very much needed. Um, at some point, I'm going to have to post something for uh, an application of these because talking in general terms or the formal language here without kind of quote informal uh, examples does not help very much. So just keep in mind that this does come back again. I can't quite remember where uh, St. Carr put their second order stuff, but I'll have to go look for it. But, you know, nonetheless, uh, that was fun. Uh, definitely want to give a reminder that uh, going into next year, we're going to have to uh, branch out into different uh, course subjects, uh, thinking classical mechanics first, because that's the other one missing from this trio. But definitely a lot of fun coming up. So share this with a friend who's also curious about science, and let's grow this community together. Uh, I can't thank the supporters of the channel enough, especially Patreon seems to be growing like crazy. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, please keep uh, messaging and you know sharing thoughts and how your semester's going because I know you're right in the middle of it. Midterms just finished up and you're getting ready for that final push. It's now November, so you have one month left. Just keep your head down, keep pushing forward, and trust in yourself and your intuition. And above all else, enjoy the process because learning is never going to stop. The more you learn or the more you love learning, the easier it will be to tackle some of these difficult things. I was helping another student with quantum mechanics, and quantum mechanics seems to be one of those classes where there's a whole lot moving around that does not have any kind of consistency in how it's taught. So definitely get as many perspectives as needed because it's something that is of great interest to a lot of people especially if you want to be a field theorist or going to something like string theory, you got to get these bases done pretty well. So take all the time you need, but also enjoy the process. So as always, thank you for watching. And until next time, stay curious.